Hi, I'm Engineer Bill. A lot of times I'm working on projects that are preparatory and I can't really talk about them. I got gear sets that I have to uh, develop, even custom electrical outlets, capturing devices, some structural pieces, little pieces. Now I can't show you the proprietary projects, but the medical devices is probably number one in what my time is used for. You know, believe it or not, mechanical engineer, yep, medical equipment or devices. That's all I can say about that. The second one, uh, most busiest area that I'm involved in is uh, transportation. We all use medical devices. We all use transportation. Uh, those are easy things for me to be consumed with. Uh, the third one might be boats or the marine industry. You know, not everybody uses it, so it's a real tough market to, to spend a lot of money on engineering. It's, it's usually done by little groups here and there or little companies that make specific little products. The economy of scales with boats is a little tricky and, and it's not very profitable because it's just not as widely used by everybody like uh, transportation and medical devices. Because I'm slightly involved with the marine industry, I wanted to talk about boat shows. I've been to three uh, recently, as recently as a couple weeks ago. That's a St. Petersburg boat show in Florida. That's a Miami boat show in Florida and Annapolis. There are different shows that are fun to go to. Some are not fun and I would not recommend going. But what surprised me most is the boat shows have been packed, especially recently. In fact, I can't move my boat to a new destination that I want to move to because there are no marinas that can take me. They are all packed. I'm lucky to have the one I have because there are people waiting for my spot if I should ever uh, vacate it. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today, the boat shows. There is good things about boat shows, bad things about boat shows. And when you go to a boat show, if if you decide to go to a boat show, there, and this is very briefly that I go through this, uh, there are things to look at. I mean, a lot of people go and they see the bling, and that's what a lot of boat manufacturers want you to see. They want you to see pretty. Uh, when I go to the boat show, I look for functional, and, and a lot of other boat owners do too. Once you have a reasonably sized boat, then you realize how important functionality is. And a lot of these boats just are not functional. Some are not reasonable. Uh, one thing that boats sell is a dream and the dream is not really reality, but some boat shows are just so much fun to go to. Not all of them, some are terrible, but I'm going to talk about that. Right, this is the St. Petersburg Boat Show. You walk into it and you've got little boats that are racing around. Of course, there's dinghies for your boat. Now look at this, this is a ridiculous price for the boat. And look what you're getting. You're not getting much of a boat. The price, in my opinion, is just ridiculous. Now here's a much nicer boat that's uh, a similar style. And how much do you pay for a nicer boat? And keep in mind the trend for these boats is more engines off the back. This has got four engines. It's designed for deep sea fishing so that you can get out fast and back in fast. You're not, you're not wasting as much time in the travel. This is what you're really paying for. You're paying for those engines. But check out this price. It is crazy. Now here's a bigger boat, one you can actually sleep on or cruise in comfortably. I would say 90% of the boats we checked out did not have the headroom, especially under doorways, and the beds were nowhere near long enough. All right, I know it's, it's a little dark. Look at these instrument panels. They, they have tilted so far back you can't really see. And if, I, if I can stand up more on people, not enough headroom. Okay. This particular boat show had one small tent, hardly any vendors of any interest, 
After a couple hours, we, we left. There is there's nothing there for us to look That's at and see. Here. But look at all the people flowing in. This was really a boat show for the first time boater, maybe. How we doing? Now compare this to the Miami Boat Show. The Miami Boat Show was amazing. Yes, you had the way too expensive boats and much, much bigger boats uh, for the multimillionaires, uh, certainly. But when we went to the boat show, we had a hotel that was right across the street from one of the ferries and the ferries took you as part of your entrance ticket across the bay to where the boat show was and what a thrill even just that ride was. The views of downtown Miami were spectacular. Now this was another boat show that was very crowded. We got to tour the inside and it was a private tour of this uh, all electric catamaran and wow we really got the a really good review of what was going on there didn't have to deal with any crowds at all uh, i'm still surprised we we're able to do that it's kind of like cars if they ever resolve the battery issue then uh, electric is the way to go this was a smaller boat um, much smaller than ours but for two people it, all right it was really kind of comfy so and everything looked well designed and by well designed I mean functional even the V berth was really pleasantly laid out the beds were big enough surprisingly every year they get nicer and there was enough headroom these are pretty nice if I won the lottery now look at these engines how big they are compared to my wife these outboard motors have gotten huge and again, you see the trend. The more motors in the back, the, the happier everybody is. This is one of the largest catamarans. Also notice that this catamaran is so big that it carries two anchors. All right. Now we're at the Annapolis Boat Show. This is one of the granddaddies of the boat shows, at least in the United States. And here is the dinghies again. And you know, a lot of people don't know how much fun these little boats are because they're cheap enough where everybody can have the exact same boat and you're competing against each other. Racing in identical boats is a thrill. Very challenging, very complex. And the beginning of the race or two minutes before the race is the hardest part of the race. And, w and my wife and I have done racing for years in sailboats. At, at the time we had our trimaran and this is a trimaran and it's the same company that built our trimaran. Interesting that our trimaran was built in California. They did move the production facilities after my trimaran was built to Vietnam. And in doing so, they changed a few things. As always, when something is shipped over to Vietnam to reduce the cost, they reduce the cost in other areas, uh, either less resin, a little bit smaller package, and that's what happened here. Nobody knew that there was any difference, not even the, the salespeople. But when I went into this new one, I couldn't fit inside. I couldn't sit up straight and not hit my head on the ceiling. In my California production trimaran, supposedly identical, uh, I had no problems at all with the clearance, and I fit in there just fine. So these things happen. That's why you go and verify yourself. Now look at these crowds here. You would think this was hard to get around, but no, it was, it was fun. It was lively. The people were all pleasant. Even if you wanted custom lines made, they'll do it right there for you. And they had the machinery right there to do it. And there's other things that were at this show. Uh, beautiful kayaks. This is something I'd like to get a hold of. We, we have kayaks, but I miss sailing. I'd like to bring a small kayak on our motorboat that had sails onto it so it can do sailing and paddling at the same time. At the Annapolis Boat Show, they had people showing you different techniques of boat building if you wanted to build your own boat. This is a stitching technique, but there's all kinds of good tips and people to talk to right there that 
have done this and the different techniques and it was really a good learning experience. They even demonstrated the boats in the middle of the show. They were blocked in on all sides, but they had enough room and then they were just showing the maneuverability. The thrusters now, you get the bow and the, the stern thrusters and I don't have a problem because I have two engines, but on a lot of these sailboats, they only have one engine, so how do you turn around in one spot? I can do it on my boat, but these sailboats can't. So they have the side thrusters and they're showing the maneuverability and it's, uh, it's making owning a boat so much nicer than it used to be. This is a racing boat. For one, look at the rudders. There are, there's two of them. There's offset from the center and you have a tiller. Like my sailboat always had a tiller. I like the tiller better than the wheel. Now look at this. Well, you, you all have seen some sailing racing where they have a whole crew and you see a whole bunch of guys cranking on these pedals pumping away at the hydraulic pressure. And so I entered a contest to do the hand crank. I'm telling you, that is tough. Now, if you don't know what a hand crank is doing, they're producing hydraulic pressure so they can steer and move. Power has to come from the people. So the people that are cranking these out, they are the engines. And they're pumping away, trying to keep the hydraulic pressure up. And boy, I gave it my all for about a minute and a half or two minutes. and. I was exhausted and I still didn't come close to ranking on the board. It was a blast. At a lot of boat shows, there's really expensive boats. There's some dinghies, but really expensive boats. At the Annapolis, they cover the full range. A lot of these sailboats are sold because people will join a club and they will race similar boats. So they'll go out and try to find the same kind of boats that are raced so they can be truly competitive. Talk about worrying about my, my headroom. My wife doesn't have to worry about it, but in some places over these doors, look how much room the door could have gone higher if they cut it higher. Of course, there might be structural integrity issues. The reason why they didn't cut it up to the ceiling or closer to the ceiling, but some of the boats, like this one, are really low. If it was up a couple inches, I can fit right through, but now I have to duck all the time. Look at these boats in uh, Annapolis. They really pack them in there. You can almost walk from boat to boat. But you get so many varieties. This is a sailboat. This is a monohull. Personally, I don't like monohulls. I don't like the feeling of being inside a basement. And unfortunately, this boat has a lot of windows. A lot of boats are trying to open up to make it appear bigger on the inside. But you're still down inside a hole, which I don't like. The bad thing about these boats is when the sun is shining, the, those windows are just going to be like heat lamps. I mean, they look nice at the boat show, but they're not functional because you're going to have to put some kind of shade or covering over them. Otherwise, all that sunshine coming in is going to cook you. These are the trends of the boats. They're having levered back ends, side ends, anything to make the boat appear or feel a little bit bigger. This is a really a good idea. It's kind of like the sliders on RVs now. So I actually designed a boat years ago that had all sliders just like the RVs. And I decided not to do anything with it because I'm just too busy. Now look at this sailboat. It opens up on the back and it's got a little garage in there. And that's, uh, that's where you'd normally keep your dinghy if you don't want to hang a dinghy out the back. This is what I mean by great historic places in Annapolis. All these buildings had to do with boat building at one time. Wooden boats. It's a really interesting area just to walk around. Same with this. It's a restaurant now and at one time they built boats in it. A lot of boat shows don't do tour boats. This is one thing that is an awesome part of Annapolis. One thing that's interesting about Annapolis and the, these homes right here, this used to be at one time, maybe going back uh, before the onset of plumbing in the United States. These homes on the water side were where the servants lived or the poor people lived. The rich people lived up on the mountain because all the sewage would flow down into the water. The higher up the mountain you were, the, the wealthier you were, you were and the more valuable the property was. Well, soon as modern sewage treatment developed, all of a sudden the property values switched and the poor people made tons of money because their their dwellings and property were became very expensive and the people that were very wealthy and up on the mountain you know their property values dropped like a rock but right now some of the most expensive real estate in america is right on the water side here it's not just the the 
with the homes and the property that look stunning. Look at these historic boats that have been restored. This is just a beautiful boat. These people like their boat so much that they want to be near it. They're out there sitting right next to the boat. And I understand that. I, I almost want to do that with my boat sometimes. Of course, not everybody goes to the boat show via automobile or fly in to see it. They, they're bigger boats. Then they take their dinghy and dinghy in. Uh, look at this. Uh, sometimes it gets really crowded. If you ever wanted to know what a racing sailboat looks like on the inside, a stripped down racing boat. It's amazing there's no walls or no formal kitchen or anything. It's all open, but it's all very clean. It looks huge. Uh, my wife and I actually really enjoyed being inside the racing boat. We thought it was more comfortable than some of the other boats as far as feeling closed in. You didn't feel closed in. Uh, you had a space to sleep and not too much else. Here's another innovation. Where have you seen this before? This is a catamaran. Instead of having two engines that are built in, they have their outboard and they have it on a little slider so they can pull it up out of the water when they're not using it and pull it back in into water when they, when they want to use it, one on each side. I thought this was brilliant. Actually, I designed a trimaran. Unlike the showboat, my outboard motors were actually a little bit inboard in the AMAs and they just tilted up normally but were kind of hidden away. So I was really intrigued to see this. What a great idea. I point out this picture only because look at the arch where a door is. And they've got, instead of going straight across, they have it going up and it's much higher. This is what I'm talking about. These are much easier on the head for me to get in and out where the doorway is. And there's plenty of room. One thing you'll notice in the St. Petersburg show, there was a lot of young people. In Annapolis, you have a much older group. You know, the boating lifestyle you really need to be older in order to have accumulated enough money to be able to afford it. That's not the case for everybody, but it's definitely the case for me. I had to wait a long time. So the best show we go to in the United States is Annapolis. It's fun. It's a fun place. It's exciting. It's a great group. You see so much. Uh, Miami was great for a different reason. A lot of vendors there. The St. Petersburg and some of these smaller shows forget it you're wasting your time the st petersburg show is for the locals mostly and they offer nothing special it's not fun it's not exciting it's not in a place that wow you're just grateful to be there uh, avoid the smaller shows stick with the big big boat shows that's where it is fun the little ones no forget it waste of time and that's my review of the boat shows thanks a lot for watching